Well, I was listening to the Schalke America podcast in the lead up to this game, the lead English language podcast for Schalke fans out there. And they were certainly calling for Chernilov to be considered for the right wing role. Blau und Weiss sein Lieben lang. Welcome to episode 148 of Shock America. I'm your host, Richard Carmen. Joining me as always, co-host Jack Mangan. Happy Victory Monday. Happy Victory Monday, sir. Um, and uh, a very important one at that. After a disappointing yeah. result last week to a bottom feeder in Dusseldorf going into a um, pretty important fixture. Uh, you know, Paderborn team that's maybe slipping up a little bit recently but still very dangerous um and uh yeah very glad that we're sitting here on a, on a victory monday tonight yeah and we got lots of reasons to be happy right? obviously the win's the most important thing right but uh we got a shout out from james thorogood if you listen to the very beginning of the podcast you heard those uh sultry voices of uh of james uh yeah plug in the show there uh Talking about how we were adamant about Cherlinov being on the right hand side and not bolter bolter should be back at the top and Lo and behold, both guys score in their natural positions. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. not a particularly controversial take from us. I mean, <laughs> thought it was like you know, a pretty, much worse. Yeah, you know, a pretty, a pretty logical take. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, shout out, shout out to James, um, friend of the show. He's been on at least once, and uh, really good dude. Um, you know, big fan of his content over yeah. the years, whether it's talking foosball way back in the day, mm. um, or, you know, what have you. And uh, I think an underrated commentator. So uh, I, I didn't realize that he was going to be. Uh, on the comms, this is one of the rare games where we were on ESPN. Um, yeah. And it sounds like they're expanding their coverage as we talked about last week. So maybe we'll get more of this. But yeah, you know, the stream was always nice to hear a friendly voice. So um, yeah, nice to have James on the call. Absolutely. And like, uh, as we, we heard from uh, a fellow Shaka friend, uh, Nate, he, he's the one who told us about it. He's like, hey, you know, uh, Shaka changed up their contracts with, with ESPN and the fight to league. And now there's going to be more games here uh, in the Rook Runda. And so, yeah, we got a game this weekend. We're going to be another one coming up soon as well. Um, so that it's exciting news. And uh, we, you know, we, we watch the game any way we need to, we can, but you know, it's good for other people over here on this side of the pond to be able to watch the games as well as, you know, partake in our in our in our voices and stuff so. yeah i mean i really have no idea how many viewers they're going to get on these espn but um i mean i know there are at least a number of people that we know that have had difficulty signing up for shalka tv obviously that was the case for us as well for quite some time earlier yeah. in the season so i know there will be some people that absolutely will be watching these games any chance they get so hopefully it's kind of like a you know if you build it they will come situation and maybe espn will um realize the value in, in showing some of these but uh you know we'll have to see how it goes yeah yeah absolutely and uh you know what what a way to do it it was a game that um last week we had a a blip in the radar i mean at that point we didn't know what it was but a, an unexplicable loss to a bottom feeder team in dusseldorf uh losing to them two to one and and really we're like what the heck is this because we can't afford at any point of the season especially this point of the season to start losing some games uh because we want to be promoted and, and it's not going to be it's not going to be fun for the team, you know, if we if we can't, we don't get the uh, promotion, I should say. And so we called it in this podcast and said it's a must win. We have to. And really, the, from here on out, it's a must win. But this game in particular had to be a win. And uh, sure enough, the guys did um, get the victory, obviously, 2 nothing in this game. Uh, let's get into the lineups real quick. Well, the man the man that we were highlighting, uh, Cherlinov there, uh, starting off this thing. But uh, in goal, obviously, Martin Frazel. Uh, back three of Itakura, Sani, and Kaminsky. Tiao would be on the bench on this one. Uh, midfield is where you would have some changes. Cherlinov on the right, as we mentioned. Oyan back on his left, like as he normally is. Florian Flick in the holding position with Idrizi and Mikhailov. What? And then up top, Bulter back in his natural position with Simon Toroda. I know you got some thoughts on this lineup. I mean, how could you not? But I mean, I mean, at least at least when there's changes this week, there are changes that you that make sense within the system that he typically plays as opposed to, you know, Bolter being at like right wing back for some reason uh, previously. Um, 
yeah, we, we've continued to see a little bit of rotation in the back three, as we as we suggested. Now that Sane has been healthy, um, and once again, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to that. I think if you give somebody a little bit of rest, like every you know, and just kind of rotate somebody in and out, it's I think that's a good thing potentially. I trust all four of the guys back there. Um, Flick, you know, I'm a fan of his. Um, I talk about it a lot, uh, which once again is not. I, I haven't really like said that I definitively think he should be starting over Paulson, um, but I, I do want to see more of him in specific games for sure. Um, and I, and we'll talk about this later, but I think some of the things that we're always talking about, he delivered on and also contributed off the ball defensively quite a bit too, which is maybe where you'd be concerned about him in general. Um, throwing off back on the right wing, as you said, very good. Um, and then, yeah, Mikhail, I haven't seen it a lot of him this season. So interesting to see him get the call. It's a very young and kind of energetic, you know, those dual eights, whatever you want to call them, um, centrally. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you know, the, the kind of the OG partnership up top, Bolter and Tirada, which, but it was still what I want to see. Once again, no disrespect to Peeringer, right. love him as a super sub, bring him off. I mean, bring him on, uh, uh, you know, after 60 minutes and, and get some fresh legs. But, um, Bolter's excellent. He's been doing a great job all season. There's no reason why I don't think he should be starting most of the games. How did you, uh, how did you feel about things? Yeah, you know, well, the, the back three, obviously, uh, I was completely fine with. I, I'm with you. The back four, really, the four of them, uh, I'm comfortable with anyone that plays. And we saw even in the games, you know, Sané picked up a little knock. Seemed like he was okay, but, you know, hey, just take him off, bring on someone else, you know, T. out can more than and more play the position. So, fine with that. Uh, happy to see Trillin off on the right wing side. Like, you know, we said we needed someone who's a right winger type player or even a right back as opposed to Boulter. You know, we love Boulter, but he belongs up top. Um, I was happy to see Flick, like you, curious to see how he would do. He needs more minutes, obviously, to improve. Uh, so curious about him. And then, obviously, you know, I, I agree with the Mikhailov thing, Mikhailov and Idrizi, that energy. Hopefully, it was going to bring some uh, bring some good in the attack. And, um, yeah, I mean, I understand Mikhailov. I mean, Salazar had an okay game last week. Uh, he, was, he got better as the game went on. Um, probably one of the bright spots of the team, really, last week. But maybe he maybe he had to pick up a knock and need a little bit of rest and – um Li Dong Zhang or, or Dong Zhang Li, however you want to pronounce it. Uh he he's not ready to start a Bundesliga game or a Svita Liga game yet. So I understand why he's on the bench. So Drexler just come back off injury, Latza as well. So you're not gonna put them out there. So I, I understand the Mikhailov thing. Um better to try it now than when you go against St. Pauli or, or Hamburg or something like that. So not that we're playing Hamburg again, but um yeah, it was okay lineup overall. And um uh, and uh, looking on the bench, like I said, some of those guys that are coming back now, we're starting to get healthy. It's important for this uh, final stretch of the season, the last 11 games or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I love the, the better substitutions and uh, insertions to the lineup. This has made, made much more sense than normal or than last week, I should say. So, uh, yeah, it's good. Um, so the game was interesting. The first time we played these guys uh, – Tight game. We talked about it last week. Uh, Boulter ended up making this like run that Toroda ended up putting away. The only goal in that game. Very tough game. We talked about last week or last episode how Paderborn had been playing the top teams very tough, and I didn't know how tough they were. And and uh, shout out to James Thurgood for this for the statistic. But Paderborn, you know, after this this game when they lost, this is their first loss on the road this season. They've been road warriors for real, and then that's it shows how this how tough they've been. And they played pretty tough in this game. I thought um, we had some opportunities here and there. Both teams really had opportunities. I think what was nice to see, and I'm curious on your thoughts, the press was back. Uh, it immediately looked like we were into the game as opposed to last week. Last week it looked a little off, as we talked about. This week we were re-engaging in the, in the press, doing some things offensively, um, and causing turnovers. Uh, what did you see in that first first half? I mean, yeah, we talked last week about how excellent Paderborn have been on the road. I didn't realize they were quite that excellent in terms of not having, you know, lost previously. So that's surprising to hear. But um, yeah, Schalke, a better home team, Paderborn, a better road team. Um, and yeah, the Dusseldorf thing, from the beginning in that match, we seemed to be a little bit off the pace. Uh, certainly we're, cutting, we're putting the kind of pressure on them that they were putting on us. Um, and yeah, I would definitely agree the first five minutes in particular, I think, uh, you could see there's going to be a high line of confrontation. There's going to be a lot of energy off the ball, trying to up that, um, you know, that intensity and and disrupt things, um, you know, when they're further back in their own half than than we were sort of allowing. I think with Dusseldorf at times, um, and, and they actually returned that in kind in the first half as well. Um, I thought it was actually a pretty cagey first half in terms of uh, very few clear cut chances and a lot of um, you know just strong defensive play sort of in the central areas. Uh, but yeah, definitely from an approach standpoint, 
a much better start first 10 minutes thought we looked great kind of fell into a lull and like maybe the 10 minutes after that leading up to our initial goal but yeah much better first half overall yeah i, I thought also the play of frazzle was much better he was much more engaged into the game making he did, he still took some chances but they were they were good they, they ended up being uh turned out very positive for him uh and us uh so yeah no i thought it was a good pressure to start the game i thought that um again like every, like we talked about against the dusseldorf match and other games at times you saw them trying to trying to play the ball between our defenders and our goalie that spot over the top the very direct play we were better at it in this game but still it's a weakness for us i mean our guys know it's coming and they're they play that tight uh that tight um uh, offside trap but it's worrying you know because you got a team that if they nail that pass you got a clear breakaway and we got lucky in this game but um you know we talked about mikhailov as one of the guys who got the start in this one he was doing some good stuff early on. Uh, he really caused the uh, foul that led to the free kick that led to the goal. Uh, he right. goes down the left-hand side, gets taken down. Um, good work by him. Good pressure to get the ball. It's actually off a turnover, I believe, too, that I think he caused uh, from the pressure. Uh, and then Oyan does what he's going to do on the free kick, swings it in, near post, Boulter heads it back, pack, right, right past the hoots in the goal. Uh, one nothing, just like that. Happy to see Boulter back in his actual position and doing what he's doing, scoring goals. Uh what a way to get the game started there. And then, of course, the, you know, the furrowed brow in the face afterwards uh, immediately, which is it just it's so <laughs> love I, it. I love I, it. I, I love both their goal celebrations more than like anybody else. It's so fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's Oyan doing Oyan things. It's not like, you know, a spectacular ball or anything, but it's it's hit with pace. It's got some dip on it, you know, clears the one man wall and gets, you know, into a dangerous area near post. And um I'm not exactly sure what the marking scheme there was for Paderborn. I think when they watched that one back, they would have been pretty disappointed in themselves. Um, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna mark somebody, you'd like to probably mark Tirada and Bolter on a set piece, probably. Yeah. Um, and I, there, I don't think anyone made contact with him. He he was essentially yeah. mostly unmarked and found this like soft spot between two defenders. Um, so yeah, not 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 phenomenal defending from Paderborn there, but um hugely important to get the early goal. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, you know, Mikhailov playing playing a role in it, Adrizi as well down that side. I think the two of them kind of combining with, you know, some some nice yeah. pressure and turning the ball over. Um, Mikhailov in, in particular, I, I'm interested to hear what your thoughts were. Um, I thought he was uh, actually like pretty poor on the ball. The rare occasions he, he received it, I, I don't think he really ever took like a clean touch or really ever seemed to have possession of it for more than a second before something would happen and he would like yeah. get dispossessed or something. Um, one well, big play in the that, second half where he did that, he, had, he gets in the box and just like flicks it in. Like, what are you doing, dude? Yeah, oh, yeah, the left footed, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah, was a strange yeah. one. I like, yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, definitely unfortunate on the ball in this game. But that being said, off the ball, I thought him put in a great shift. Um, really seemed uh to understand the concept and, and like you said, some of the pressing concepts and um, and, and worked really hard off the ball. And I thought was a big contributor to you know our, our defensive effort, particularly and obviously in the first half. So, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it was a, it was a bad performance overall from Mikhailov. I was curious to see how he would do, and there's definitely room for improvement in terms of what he was doing in possession. Um, but uh, he and Idrizi was was a strong, energetic partnership. I thought there, yeah, for sure. Uh, and it was a nice change from last game, obviously. And you know, if you if you come into a game, you want to do at a minimum. You just want to show that hustle and, and work hard. If, maybe the plays don't go for you offensively, but at least if you work your your you grind it out and and you hustle around like Salazar was doing early in the season, people are going to respect you for that, right? And and Mikhailov was doing that, I think. He was certainly doing that, getting going up on the press, you know, causing some some turnovers, you know. He was, he was doing some good things. He was getting himself in good positions now. The touch and, and you know, being more composed is going to have to come, you know, with some time. He's only, what, 19 years old, but he was in the right positions. He just got to do better once he's got the ball, right? He's like, it's like a, McKinney used to have a big problem with that when he, when he got the ball all the time and, He's he, he got better as his time with Shaka went on, uh, and so Mikhailov will get there. He's still you know we 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 signed him off of a, a free trial or something like that uh, in the off season, so he'll get there. But I like what I saw from him, and it was important what he did, the, the hard work he put in there because it did lead up to that first goal. And overall, he was he was all over the place. He just he just got to work on his on his uh, his his composure, honestly. So. Um, yeah, I mean, once again, far from a perfect performance from him, a lot to criticize, yeah. but I but I simultaneously feel like he absolutely justified his presence yes. out there on the yes. whole. Like, yeah, yeah. No, it was it was a good it was a good selection for him, and I think he uh, made Gramotzi's happy uh, with with the way he played in this game. So, uh, yeah, him and both Idrizi, I think, uh, did very well. And and in the as the sec or first half continued on, um, 
you saw some chances, you know, Proger was trying to get in the game. You know, we were doing a good job. Itakura was doing a really fantastic job on, on Proger. Um, a couple times he went over the top and Fraz will come out and he would get the ball out. Uh, we had some chances ourselves, but uh, nothing really crazy in that first half. It seemed like both teams didn't want to really go all out and really they were trying to be conservative and not give up the give up the big play as opposed to try to go and, and get the big play. Did you kind of get that feeling also in the first half? Yeah, I don't know if it was so much like weren't trying to go for the big play. Like I said, I think it was just there was a lot of energy off the ball from both teams, and so both teams found it very difficult to progress. They were both, once again, high lines of confrontation. Um, it wasn't uncommon in this game to see, um, you know, the strikers putting pressure on the center backs all the way to the basically the goalkeeper box. Um, and so I just think it, it took a long time. There, were, there wasn't a lot of transition opportunities until the second half a little bit more. When the game opened up a little bit, you started seeing more dribbles and that kind of thing. Um but yeah, I mean, Progress a guy coming in that I was concerned about. I thought he was one of the more dangerous players last time that uh, we faced them, um, and I uh, maybe played a little bit of a different role in the previous game. But you know, starting up top centrally, and I thought, um, you know, it was at least important that I don't think Carl's Jr. Um, or uh, uh, Musiala on the right side really had a particularly strong games either. So there wasn't there weren't really a lot of standout performers. From Paderborn, in my opinion, a couple guys in the midfield, I think, did relatively well. But as far as like, you know, some yeah. like the more skill positions, like the wider players and the attacking players, I thought um, kind of lacked a cutting edge for the most part. But, you know, Proger got a couple shots off in the second half. That's about it. Yeah. And, and Huth had some decent saves in this game, which we'll get to. Uh, you mentioned Carl's Jr., uh, former Shaka player. He would come off at halftime for another former Shaka player, Felix Platt. Uh, there's actually a former Dort uh, Dortmund player on there as well. But, uh, We'll, we'll skip him. <laughs> um, Felix Platt has been having a pretty good season, though, hasn't he? Or am I making that up? I feel like he's had a couple decent performances. Well, I'll have to look see. at his stats later. I'm, yeah, I'll have to look at 18 matches, right. eight goals. Is that right? Is that right? I guess it I is. I feel like this is, yeah, I mean, I, I should be more on top of this than I am. I feel like he's had a decent season this, you know. I think it's eight, eight goals this season so far, which is pretty good. Good for him. I mean, that's his boyhood club, honestly. Uh, he left there when he was... Uh, 2011 or something came to Shaka and then went back to Paderborn. So yeah, I mean, good for him. He was one of those guys that I thought looked pretty decent, like in the in yeah. the few opportunities, and then they just didn't get any more and sort of like disappeared all of a sudden. But um, yeah, we're not uh, complaining, right? <laughs> uh, we talked about how um, Salif Sane uh, he did pick up a little injury. He, he looked pretty good in this game uh, overall. The back three did you know look fairly decent, uh, but in the 53rd minute or just about there, a um, couple minutes before that. He tried this little spinorama move, got kind of like hacked, I think, by our, our Serbeni, or I forget who it was. Um, he was down for a while, grabbing his knee, and looked a little scary there. But he got up and kept playing, and then maybe like three, minutes, three four minutes later, Gramozzi just yanked him out of there, and he looked fine. Uh, maybe it was precaution and brought in Malik Tiao. I'm totally fine with that move there, Jack. Uh, you know, uh, Sane, who's had numerous injury problems in his career, you know, just when we got him back healthy, we got a back four that we're, we're happy with. I, I'm completely fine with him um, coming out early, though he might have to start next week because of uh, Milik's yellow accumulation. But thoughts on the substitution, possible injury with him? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no issue with the substitution. Um, I think that's a smart play in that situation when you have another guy that you trust, you can bring in with with no issue. Uh, the only downside now is that Malik Chow ended up picking up a pretty cheap yellow card late in that match and is going to be unavailable due to um, accumulation suspension. I think uh, for the next game against Karlsruhe, did you say it was? Um, so that'll yep, be, yep. yeah. So that, that's unfortunate, but, um, yeah, I mean, we obviously we want to protect Sane. He's been unavailable for most of the season. He's only kind of been working back in recently and, you know, he had, his durability has been an issue while he's been in Chalco. So, um, yeah, treat it with caution. Um, I, I feel like he was catching some heat online for his performance in this game. And I didn't fully agree with that. Um, or some people just saying they look like off the pace or whatever. I don't know. I, I, I do Wait, think he this? did, uh, Sane. Really? Uh, yeah, I saw like I saw like a couple different people that like were kind of taking not like not like serious, but like taking the kind of yeah. mild shots at him. Um, and I guess like the one thing I will say though is he was doing his typical thing of um, like whenever a play ends, just like looking at Kaminsky or somebody else and like like kind of exasperatedly like why yeah. didn't you do? And what I'm realizing is, is like some <laughs> half of the times he's doing that, it's legit, and half of the times is like he was in a position to do what he was asking the other person to do and just like didn't do it and then gets upset with them when they don't do it. So yeah, he's always an interesting person to watch, like uh in terms of the way he directs what's happening. Yeah, yeah, much more than anybody else and seems to be, you know. Uh, at least with his gesticulations. I don't know if anyone else is talking. You can't really pick that up on the broadcast as much when people are like chirping. But um, yeah, I thought Sonny played fine. 
uh Salma says uh his effort was lacking a little bit okay that's fair that's fair Simon Simon yeah Simon sorry um yeah that, that, I guess that, that could that, that could be the case too I, I I think you know with him he's definitely more the vocal leader compared to him and Itakura right Itakura is more the quiet one he will you know yell at guys at, at times but um he kind of leads guys with his gestures and said you know he I thought Itakura was quite good in this one he's always good he's yeah always but good. I mean he made some great tackles he had a nice tackle on Proger in the second half um, some other substitutions in this game. Salazar would finally come into the game. Um, Lazza would come into the game as well for Mikhailov. That was a fairly early substitution with uh, Sane and uh, Tiao making the swap as well. Um, the business really did pick up in the second half. You know, Cherlinov ends up hitting the post. It was a wonderful give and go between, uh, I forget who it was, it was Oyan and I don't remember who it was, maybe Danny Lazza. Uh, Oyan does a swinger across, across the face of the goal. Goalie had nothing, it was stuck in no man's land. Terlinov open back door hits the post should have been a goal there uh and maybe a couple minutes down the, maybe, i think literally two minutes down the down the pitch on our end um Sorbeni gets a great opportunity uh Frazzle actually gets his hand on the ball hits the post stays out and then a couple minutes after that um Simon Toroda gets a header and Huth gets a save on that and hits off the post as well and that goes like across the goal line barely staying out and then they cleared it away. Uh, it started picking up very quickly there, and three posts when it really looked like we had nothing too crazy going up up until that point. Yeah, I thought it was smart, um, and this is one thing I think we've given Gramatzos credit for over the season is I think he's been much better with his substitution management than previous managers that we've seen, like David Wagner, for example. Gramatzos, like pretty consistently, is on top of that and doesn't wait too long to change things up. Um, and in this game, where you know I think the effort that was being put in off the ball by some of these central mids. Um, and how much energy they were expending. But that being, I think, like an important key to how we were playing at the time, um, he didn't wait until much past like the 60th minute to replace both of those guys and bring fresh legs on in both of those positions to kind of keep up that intensity and not let it drop yeah. over the course of the second half. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I, I appreciated that from him. Uh, yeah, I think it was Donnie Lotza, um uh, on that first opportunity that you mentioned, quick give and go between him and Oyan, uh back post for Tronov. Um one, probably one of the only notable moments for Donnie Lotz in this one. I don't think he did too much in the second half that, that stood out, but a nice little interplay there. Um, and uh, yeah, just kind of wasteful for Schalke at this point. Um, doing very well, getting a lot of chances. Um, I, I think uh, I think Paderborn came out in the second half and looked tired. It looked a little bit worn down from that first half. I think um, they dropped some of their like man-marking intensity centrally, and that allowed us to play some of those initial balls centrally um, in, in our buildup because it had softened up a little bit, which, which meant like the secondary ball that like, you know, when somebody's arriving in the final third, that ball's right. going out to the flanks, which allows for some crosses and some more dangerous play right. where a lot of times the central areas are shut down for us. So the initial ball is out to like one of the wing backs and then yeah. that next ball has to come back centrally often. And it, we struggle to do that. So I felt like, you know, it, that was kind of happening in the second half for a little, just a little bit. Oh, was getting some stuff. Cherlinov was popping up in space on the right-hand side as well. And um, yeah, just, just couldn't finish a couple of those opportunities. Toronto, I thought was a little bit uncharacteristically wasteful in, in some of his moments had a good game yell, overall. I felt like, yep. yeah. Um, I thought he had, he had some good moments um, actually dropping deep um, kind of like hold up play and, and bringing people in. I thought he did quite well there, but I uh, had a couple opportunities, I think around the box, maybe do a little bit better. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Uh, he looked he looked probably better outside the box and inside the box. Had this nice uh, little flick give and go with Boulter uh, in that second half, uh, which I was like, oh, that's Toronto. Okay, what's he doing way out the box? Um, it was interesting in this game because you know Gramozzi's talked about one how it, his his experiment with Boulter was a failure and they're not doing that again. Um, but two, he really wanted to see uh, um, the team really show up and and show another side of them from what they saw the Dusseldorf match. And I thought it was interesting that he used, he went with the youngsters, you know, Mikhailov and Idrizi to really, you know, youngsters are typically just going to go and give everything they have because, you know, they really want to make an impression that actually served us very well. And then once they got tired, like you said, Gramozzi pulled them quickly, put in the veterans who can see out the rest of the game and, and Latza and in Salazar. And that's interesting because usually typically you start, you do the opposite, right? You start with the, with the veterans and get the game going. And once the game's, you know, wrapping up you bring in the youngsters and i like this way i like the way he did it. i don't want to see this every game and like you said situationally this is it's, a, it's the right play to do and i thought in this game it worked no that's a good call because it could have been it could have been experienced as a factor as well which i hadn't really considered as much but that's that's a that's a good take on it as well i thought it was more just you know just kind of like systematically what we were trying to do in that game like fresh legs were important in those positions but yeah that's a good that's a good shout 
Uh, Jonas is saying, uh, Gramozzi is doing a good job when it comes to building team spirit, even though there might be heat between him and specific players, at least what's with the media in Germany are reporting. So interesting. Yeah, no, and I agree with that. Um, and he's always shown that, uh, that, that quality, uh, he, when he was at Darmstadt, he was doing the same thing too. So, um, yeah, the team's, the team's responding at the moment. Um, and then we talked about Bolter getting his natural position. He would score a goal. Our man Cherlinoff on the right-hand side finally gets his goal. Uh, who makes a wonderful pass, Jack? But, uh, of course, Mr. Florian Flick. Wonderful pass by him to lead Cherlinoff in stride. And he just puts it away past, past Huth. 2-0, uh, the goal we needed because at that point, we hate the goals when they're one-goal games, uh, especially with uh, the defense we have. Uh, but 2 nothing. I put the game to bed, but uh, what a play overall! But the pass and then the finish, redemption for Trelinov after that after that big miss. Although to be fair, he had had a pretty good game up until that point anyway. Even with that miss, I thought he had um, definitely justified his time on the pitch. Important going forward, but yeah, uh, yeah you know, turnover kind of centrally. Um, Flick makes a nice run off it immediately into space to receive the ball, and then. Um, kind of a difficult ball to execute too, because he's sort of yeah. running like horizontally towards like the sideline and kind of like side foots it across his body on, on this lead pass into the path of Tronoff. And um, you got to say, under the circumstances, it's pretty well weighted overall, and, yeah. and definitely played him in. And Tronoff made a nice finish, you know, cross uh, cross goal to the back post. Um, yeah, uh, Tronoff, he reminds me of actually Bergstaller. Sometimes when you watch him, when he gets into the box faster, yeah. obviously, but I mean, like he, he is underrated strength in balance and is a really good yeah. job of holding, holding people off and everything. I think he has a little bit of like, you know, Burke style anyway, but um, yeah, hugely important goal, get the two goal cushion. Um, and pretty much from there on out, I felt like we were kind of in, in, in cruise control. Uh, there weren't that many opportunities for Paderborn after that. And they were, you know, like I said, a little bit more fatigued and a little bit lacking energy in the second half anyway. Um, uh, and, and some of the opportunities they had in the second half, were less of a result of sustained pressure by them. And, and I think more um, individual kind of mistakes or weird moments. Like there was one where like Kaminsky was upfield. So they were kind of defending in a back four. Yeah. And yeah. Sherlinov was actually having to defend that sort of like edge of the box where he typically yeah. wouldn't, if that was like the right center back was there and he just let a guy through stuff like that. But yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, big dev second goal. One question I wanted to ask you, if you don't mind, is you mentioned earlier, like, you know, like Frazzle, um, you thought he'd played pretty well. And I saw a lot of places had him as like, like one of the players of the match or like team of the week kind of situations. And like, listen, a couple huge saves in the second half, like two very big saves in the second half. And then they, maybe even like a third one off of, I think was like a deflection off of like a Schalke player. I think maybe Pieringer blocked it. Um, and he had to like make a save late, but I also felt like his stuff with the ball at his feet, there was minimum three distinct moments where I think he made the wrong decision or, or, or overestimated the amount of time he had and like almost gave the ball away. Yeah. Like first half, living, second half did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he was living dangerously for the whole 90 minutes there. And so I thought that like, obviously the, the saves are more important. That's what a goalkeeper supposed. That's the number one job is like, don't let in goal. So I understand valuing that more, but I thought his performance overall was a little bit more mixed than people were making out. How did you, how would you respond to that kind of take? Yeah. Um, I thought he played better compared to the game against Dusseldorf, right? Dusseldorf game. He was all over the place and really just all his passes is going right to Dusseldorf players. This game, they were be they were better. Uh, he uh, he always seems to have these moments where he likes to take on somebody. I don't know if they're out of boredom or he's just trying to show off his skill set. I don't know. Uh, but it's 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 a frustrating because you know one player reads that correctly, you're gonna look like an idiot. Uh, he's got away with it for the most part, you know, and he still had that in this game despite you know the passes are much better in this game. Um, he made he he the only other save he had to make in this game was in the 77th. I think at Proger had a really good opportunity and palmed it over the bar. Um, I think that yeah. was what I was talking about. I think that was deflected yeah. off of Pierre actually. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so looking at the, you mentioned he did make the, you know, the team of the week, uh, his first team of the week, really. And I, I agree with you. I don't know if it was anything really warranting of it. Maybe because he got a clean sheet, it's the sixth of the season for him. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I the Itakura insertion, I get totally. He was fantastic uh, as always. Uh, Cherlinov get had a pretty good game on the right wing, and and Oyan always Oyan's is, is a sixth uh, appearance in the team of the week. Um, but you know, Frazzle is what it is, I guess, with him. I mean, if you want to, I there, mean, that's great. I don't want to single him out and like be harsh. I'm just, I'm just like, because it, it very easily could have been two one or two two, um, yeah, with, without oh, yeah. some of the, the big moments that he had. I just kind of felt like, on the whole, though, his performance was a little bit more mixed than people were trying to let on, and that's all I was trying to say with that but anyway and, and jonas is saying the exact same thing we're saying you know when it comes to ball playing he is struggling just as much as fairman in his opinion 
not not quite as bad as Fairman, but it, but he is struggling for sure. Um, uh, Simo is saying um, Flick is very skilled offensively, gives us a lot of energy, and has great passing skills. Paulson, on the other hand, is defensively skilled. Yeah. So no, sure. no, Simon, this is this is a great this is a great opportunity to transition because I wanted to talk about this. So okay, the general narrative I think all season, and we've I, at least I have partially been responsible for this is just that you know paulson is it reads the game very well defensively in terms of like how to screen for his, his back line and that kind of stuff and, and knows when to step out and get involved in a challenge but um you know struggles on the ball struggles to connect passes or play some incisive through balls when we need him to and flick i think the, the narrative is maybe a little bit more defensively limited but skilled offensively um i thought flick was pretty good defensively in this game played the full 90 was a nuisance a lot of the time yeah. Um, had good energy was, you know, like covered a lot of ground horizontally was going like sideline to sideline to help out with some of the pressuring concepts that we had. Um, I didn't notice too many moments where I think he was messing up. So I thought this was actually not, I mean, not only a good performance, from him, but a very well-rounded performance from him that potentially changes. I'd like to see more of it when you see more appearances, yeah. but I think there's a couple good data points for him defensively in this game as well. I think what we saw in this game is kind of what I'm expecting him to be eventually to be the starter. Um, because what, what, at least for me, I don't know. I'm not going to speak for you, but what notice what I noticed about him last year when he started playing so well um, was the defensive work, not his offensive work. Defensively, he was doing some really good things last year. Now when he's playing center back, when he's playing, when he was playing as the, uh, as a central defensive midfielder or the six, uh, he was looking very good. He, he's very good on the tackle. He reads the game very well. Uh, but he is better off. He has some very good passing abilities compared to Paulson, who we, we agree is, you know, is probably the guy you want to have there defensively. I think once Flick gets more games in him and gets more experience, he's got He's going to be that. He's going to be that position on lock uh, because of those offensive abilities. I, I definitely see that defensive game in him. He just doesn't get the opportunity. He doesn't show it as often as he needs to. He needs to be more consistent. Yeah, and, and is I, a veteran. I think part of it for me too is I just kind of I kind of felt like he was maybe a little bit a little bit slower, kind of like a taller, slower kind of player. And yeah. I actually, once again, I, I was impressed by his movement and how much ground he was able to cover in this one, and how he didn't look like he was off the off the pace or struggling to kind of catch up to plays a lot. So yeah, I thought it was a very positive performance. Yeah, no, it definitely was. And then um, going back to Chilinov, I thought, well, obviously this is a much better game by the right wing position than last game, obviously. But uh, overall, I think he had a good game. Um, at times, well, one he he didn't cost us anything, right? Be on the right hand side, he he came back defensively, did some did some good work, and obviously contributed offensively. So it was a pretty good game by him overall. Um, so I'm happy. I, I don't think this is the best game we've seen from Turlinoff uh, with us. Um, so I'm glad he got on the team of the week because uh, you know he finally deserves it. But uh, good for him, and like I said, redemption for him, uh, for Bulter also for getting you know, and back in uh, his natural position and scoring goals. So. Yeah, all the way around, just happy with everything. I mean, the only, the only downside of the game was um, Malik Tiao when he came on and his his, uh, his uh, what a cameo, I guess you want to call it, gets a yellow card, ends up being yeah. his fifth yellow, which is worrisome in the sense that if Sané is injured, which we don't know yet, it looked like he he's okay, but if he was injured, he's gonna play no matter what Sané next week because Tiao can't now he's suspended. So. You know, that's the only downside there. Matriciani, I thought, did fairly, fairly decently, actually coming off as a cameo as well in that game. So I think who, we're good. Who, who do you see? Who do you see? If, if he keeps the same shape, and let's just say let's just say that, like, Chiao is suspended and Sané can't go because he's not healthy. Who do you see there? Do you see a Florian Flick at center back in a back three? Do you see? He's done any, it. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. curious. Yeah. yeah but. If Sané is healthy, it's got to be Sané, Itakura, and, and Kaminsky. Oh no! If, yeah, for sure. I'm talking about specifically if Sonny yeah. is unhealthy and can't go for whatever. If he's not, if he's unhealthy, that's a good question because you know Marius Loda you could put in there. Uh, however, I wasn't too impressed that, that, that at least in the in the friendlies that I saw him at, um, I thought he and Fairman combined were making some big errors together. Um, Flick is an option. Flick is certainly an option. He's done yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, hasn't hasn't been super convincing when he has though. It's an interesting Correct. call. But yeah, like you said, we, 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 we haven't seen. We have been on him when he did that. Yeah. Presumably, they would play Loda because they just signed him, right? But like, I yeah. the, the small cameo he had, I didn't think he was great anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, and I guess you put Matriciani, but I don't want to put. Uh, you know, that's who it was. It's Matriciani and uh, and Loda who were playing in defense and the, the friendly. They look terrible together. So I don't want to see either of them really. But you know, it is what it is. Um, I I guess that's who you would put in there. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe go to a back four, but I doubt I, it would mess up the whole team if you if you went to a back four. So uh Simon says actually this would be my preferred starting lineup. Frazzle, 
Tiao, Sani, Itakura, Flick, Chirlinov, Oyan, Razakowski. A lot of people have been called for Razakowski. Uh, Zalazar, Bulter, and Tarota. I've been, I was on the uh, on Reddit before the for the podcast, and lots of people said, "Hey, you know, I, w- I want to see what Razakowski can do." He's actually they think he has you know decent ball skill and then some some good ability on him. He just doesn't he hasn't gotten up to speed with Schalke just yet. So that's a, that's a shout for in the middle as well. And then don't forget the the new man Li Dong Zhang. Um, yeah, uh, we'll see what he can do. Uh, if you don't know who he is yet, uh, we we saw a cameo of him in Dusseldorf, uh, but we did do a uh, a tactics video. Oh, I just, just made the video disappear right there. Uh, we did a tactics video on Li Dong Zhang. Um, definitely give it a check out on our YouTube page, and you can learn a little bit more about him, his skill set, and what he potentially could bring. Because uh, if you watching some of his highlights, there's some skill set there, but you know he's got to get used to the the pace of the league first and first and foremost so but there's yeah, for sure i mean once again we, i think we said last week that that cameo he had was a weirdly timed cameo a strange game yeah. and a strange yeah. moment in the game to bring him in and it, yeah i don't think that was really um much of a data point to even consider at all i'm not really judging him based on that first appearance in any way by the way we talk about the rotation of the defenders bravo to gramotis for bringing off Toronto early putting it on piringer because piringer is another guy who can rotate with those three guys and they can really uh save some save some legs here down the stretch uh, cause we're going to need it. We're going to need it. Uh, Jonas is chiming in on Razakowski says it's amazing, but unfortunately, Gramosi doesn't see his potential. It seems like, uh, yeah, I'd like to see more of him. You know, we talk about with flick and see more playing time. I'd like to see some of these guys get more playing time. Not necessarily starts. These are all like Razakowski's burners in our chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is all. <laughs> He's just like sitting in a shout out to Razakowski. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, look up. It's important. Well, we won the game. I was two nothing. Uh, dominated a lot of statistics. Obviously, they had more possession because they were trying to get back into the game. But um, the next five games are important for us. Uh, this game was important for us. But the next five games are all bottom half table teams. We have to win. Got to Carl- feast. We got a feast. We're two points off the top of the table. We got Karlsruhe, Hansa Rostock, Ingolstadt, Hanover, Dynamo Dresden, and then Heidenheim is that big game in the, at the sixth game. If we win out the top those five games, we're gonna we might be locking up first place at that point. Because every team above us it was faltering this weekend. We're the only team in the top five, top six uh, to get a win this weekend. So um, if we – it's a big if. We know that because we yeah. saw the Dusseldorf match. But if we do what we have to do in those five games, we could be locking up first position, going to downstretch when we play Darmstadt and, and St. Pauli. Because St. Pauli is our second to last game. Uh, Nuremberg's our third to last oh, game. God. It's yeah. it's a rough end of the season. Actually, Nuremberg's our last game, I think. I forgot. We talked about that after the first St. Paul match, and I was yeah. like, they're one of the last games, and like Bergstahl is going to end our promotion chances or something like that. Like, I, so I, we I, need I, to like, win these five games. We need Thanks for reminding me because I need to mentally and emotionally prepare for that that you know possibility. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, as you said, a huge weekend for this us this past weekend, and it makes the Dusseldorf match all the more frustrating in hindsight because we'd be top of the table right now if we had gotten done in that match, what you would expect us to. But honestly, they got a result this weekend as well. So the new manager change, um, six points, right? From his yeah. first two matches, I think. Yeah. So good. I mean, yeah. shout out to them. Good for them. Um, but yeah, as you said, every team above us in the table this past weekend uh, did not get the dub. Um, and so now we're basically back within a single result of uh, not only promotion places, but a title. Um, and uh, it's a good moment in the calendar, as you said, to try to take advantage of that. And uh, once again, kind of keep that gravity with the top four as opposed to sliding down into um, the mid table. You look at a team like Sao Paulo, for example, that was one of the kind of like the stalwarts for most of the season. Um, two losses, two draws now in their last five. So they've kind of slipped up, become a little bit more porous defensively, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, like, yeah, we're in it. We're in it. Um, there's it's still going to be extremely tough. There's a lot of good teams oh. fighting up there, and you know, we have some weird performances like the Dusseldorf thing, which you just kind of ca- can't have, but um, yeah. um, credit to Gramatis and the boys. This was the, uh, the response that you needed to see from them. It's not just the result in either of those games. It was the performance in both those games. It was a poor, poor performance and a poor result against Dusseldorf. It was a much improved performance and, uh, and an improved result, obviously here. So um, let's keep it up. For anybody who's going to want to get promoted out of this league, you're going to have to earn it down the stretch. Because after our five game against the bottom half of the table, we got Heidenheim, who's just behind us, Darmstadt, Werder Bremen, who's at the top of the table, Sandhausen, they got thrown in there, St. Pauli, and then Nuremberg to end the season. That is a gauntlet to end the season. Um, so that's why these five games coming up are important. Because if we can at least get in that first spot after those five games, 
got some wiggle room there, you know, because it's top three or top two get automatic, and then the third place gets in the playoff. I'd rather be in the top two than than in the in that third spot. But uh, it's a huge, huge if. Uh, Jonas is saying um, we'd also be at the top of the table of the penalty against Bremen. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But you know, for me. I, I rue more the chances against the lower feeders, against the bottom teams. The bottom teams, you expect to cancel each other out at some point, uh, but it's those games against those small teams you need to win. Uh, and that Dusseldorf game could come back to haunt us. Maybe the Verder game. Who knows? But we'll see. We have some chance to beat Verder uh, coming here down the stretch. So we'll see. And the way the schedule, the end of the schedule set up is so emotionally treacherous for Schalke fans because I think the final four games, it's Benjamin Goller. Then Katuchu, <laughs> then Bergstaller, <laughs> then, then, and, then and, and, and then Nuremberg. It's like, and how bad would that be if, like, it was we actually had a chance to get promoted? Then Nuremberg, of all people who were like friendly with, like, stopped us from. You know, it would just be unfortunate for the relationship, but yeah, um, a lot it's gonna of, be like lot, that West Germany uh, Austria game, right from the World Cup many many years ago, where they just kind of pass the ball to each other to get the point. Yeah, the maybe. Result. Yeah, I, I'll I, take I, that. I, <laughs> <laughs> we. We do not support match fixing on the show. No, no, of podcast. course not. Of course not. Um, yeah, yeah. No, anyway, yeah. I'm saying it's a, it's an it's an emotional uh, you know minefield there at the end. So just be prepared. Take heart, Shock Nation. Yeah, that's why those five games are important. If we get in the first place with those five games, there's wiggle room. That's all I'm saying. And say, none of, none of the teams at the top are playing well at the moment. So you know, if we can get on a run, get some confidence going, uh, get some of these guys some game time. Maybe the new guys will start getting to the fold a little bit more and create some offense. I think that's the main thing we were lacking. Well, one of the many things we need some off more offense and lock up that that direct play over the top because that's what's been killing us all year long. So, yeah, it's it's a crazy crazy downstretch of the game. Last eleven games ago, it's going to be a feast or famine for sure. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, anything else uh, before we get out of here? No, I don't think so. Just, I mean, relatively healthy at the moment yeah. on the whole, and which is a good thing. Like you said, th- this is the time. So we just got to start taking advantage of it, get, get some consistency. And um, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Uh, next game is on Saturday. It's an early one, I believe. We'll, we'll do a stream. It's on Saturday. It is 7.30 a.m. on Saturday for me, 6.30 for you, Jack. So I'm not going to hold you to anything there. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do a watch along. So definitely tune in for that. Uh, maybe the game will be on ESPN plus maybe it won't, but we'll be there no matter what. So, uh, yeah, uh, chat. Thank you again for all the commentary tonight. Uh, definitely, definitely appreciate it. And again, once again, uh, give a shout out to James Thorogood, the, uh, the announcer from the last game who gives a plug friend of the show. Definitely give him a follow. Definitely. a, a really great guy there, Jack. Uh, let's wrap this up. Um, where can our followers follow? Where can our followers find you on social media? Good at that. At J M Mangan, J M M A N G A N. They can find me there. They can't necessarily find my tweets there, as you know, because I don't do that too often. <laughs> Much more of a consumer of Twitter content than a publisher. Uh, but yeah, once again, shout out James. Always cool to get a shout like that. We appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to next week, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, everyone in the chat. Uh, you can follow me as always at r underscore k h a r m e n. Follow the podcast. Here we got a YouTube page. If you haven't done so yet, like and subscribe. Definitely, uh, we'll try to put out some more content here as as the weeks go on, especially as the uh, end of the season comes on here. Hopefully, it's uh it's like a promotion one. We'll see here. But uh, anyway, until the next uh, next video comes, which will be the watch along. We'll catch you then very very soon. Blue calf. 